the aroma of simmering spices filled our small kitchen. I, Sarah, had spent hours preparing dinner, hoping this time it would meet Mark's standards. He was a tall man, always dressed in business attire, with a stern face that rarely showed emotion. As he entered the kitchen, his eyes narrowed at the sight of the dinner table. Why do you even bother, Sarah? You know I don't like your cooking. I swallowed hard, feeling the familiar sting of his words. I thought you might like this one. It's a new recipe. Mark poked at the food with his fork, his expression souring. It looks undercooked. Can't you do anything right? I bit my lip, trying to hold back tears. I'm sorry, Mark. I'll try something else next time. No, you'll eat this. If it's good enough for you to serve, it's good enough for you to eat. His voice was cold, unyielding. I stared at him in disbelief. But Mark, it's... Eat it, Sarah. All of it. I picked up my fork, my hands trembling. The first bite was difficult to swallow, each subsequent one even more so. Mark watched with a satisfied smirk as I struggled through the meal. After dinner, I cleaned up silently, my thoughts racing. This wasn't the first time Mark had been critical, but forcing me to eat food he deemed unworthy was a new low. As I scrubbed the dishes, I realized I couldn't live like this anymore. His constant criticisms, his cold indifference to my feelings, it was all too much. Later that night, as Mark sat watching TV, I joined him on the couch, a false smile plastered on my face. Mark, can we talk? He glanced at me, barely interested. What is it now? I was thinking, maybe I can take some cooking classes. You know, to improve my skills. He scoffed. Waste of money. You're beyond help in the kitchen. Please, Mark, I want to try. For us. He rolled his eyes. Do what you want, Sarah. Just don't expect me to eat any of your disasters. I nodded, pretending to be discouraged. But inside, I felt a spark of hope. Cooking classes were not on my mind. It was a cover for my real plan, to find a way out of this toxic marriage. That night, in the quiet of our bedroom, I lay awake, Mark's steady breathing the only sound. I thought about everything I had endured, the belittling comments, the emotional neglect, the feeling of never being good enough. No more. I couldn't change Mark, but I could change my situation. Over the next few days, I began to lay the groundwork for my escape. I reached out to an old friend, Emma, who had always been supportive. Emma, I need your help, I whispered into the phone, making sure Mark was out of earshot. Sarah, what's wrong? You sound upset. I took a deep breath. I'm leaving Mark. I can't do this anymore. Emma's voice was filled with concern. I'm here for you, Sarah. Whatever you need. I explained my plan to her, to save up money, gather important documents, and find a place to stay temporarily. Emma offered her spare room without hesitation. Thank you, Emma. I don't know what I'd do without you. You're stronger than you think, Sarah. You can do this. Hanging up the phone, I felt a mix of fear and determination. This was the first step towards a new life. A life where I was no longer diminished and disrespected. A life where I was free. As I lay in bed that night, a plan forming in my mind, I knew the road ahead would be tough, but I was ready, ready to fight for myself, for my worth. The next chapter of my life was about to begin, and for the first time in a long time, I felt a glimmer of hope. As Sarah, I knew I had to be smart and careful. The next few weeks were a delicate dance of feigning normalcy while secretly laying the groundwork for my escape. I started by stashing away small amounts of money whenever I could. It wasn't easy, as Mark controlled our finances, but I managed to save enough for emergencies. One day while Mark was at work, I called Emma again. Emma, can you help me understand my legal rights in a divorce? Of course, Sarah. I'll send you the contact of a lawyer friend. She's discreet and can guide you. Thanks, Emma. I'm also documenting everything, the insults, the nights he forced me to eat trash, Everything. Good. Keep records of everything, Sarah. It'll be crucial. As I hung up, I felt a twinge of fear. Was I really doing this? But then I remembered the taste of humiliation, the sting of Mark's words, and my resolve hardened. One evening, as I was cooking dinner, Mark's sudden voice made me jump. What's going on with you these days, Sarah? You seem distracted. I forced a smile, stirring the pot more vigorously. Nothing's wrong, Mark. Just tired, I guess. He eyed me suspiciously. You're not planning something stupid, are you? 
I met his gaze, trying to keep my voice steady. Like what, Mark? There's nothing to plan. His eyes narrowed, but he didn't press further. That night, I lay awake, my heart pounding. Mark was getting suspicious. I needed to act fast. The next week, I met Emma's lawyer friend, Miss Reynolds, at a cafe. Miss Reynolds, I want to leave my husband. But I'm scared. He's... He's not just verbally abusive. Miss Reynolds listened intently, her eyes kind. I understand, Sarah. I'll help you file for divorce and a restraining order. But you need to be prepared. It might get ugly. I nodded, a lump forming in my throat. I'll do whatever it takes. As the days passed, my secret preparations continued. I gathered important documents. My passport. Marriage certificate. And the diary where I documented Mark's behavior. Each step felt like a small victory. A reclamation of my own power. But with every step, Mark's suspicion grew. He started coming home early, checking my phone, questioning my every move. Why are you so jumpy these days, Sarah? Are you hiding something? I forced a laugh, trying to sound casual. Hiding something? Mark, you're being paranoid. He glared at me, his suspicion clear. I know you're up to something, Sarah. I'll find out what it is. His threat sent shivers down my spine, but I couldn't back down now. I was so close. Finally, the day came when everything was in place. I had enough money saved, a bag packed with essentials, and all my documents. Miss Reynolds had prepared the paperwork for my divorce and restraining order. That night, I couldn't sleep. I was leaving tomorrow. Leaving Mark. Leaving this life of fear and humiliation. My heart raced with a mix of fear and exhilaration. I was doing it. I was taking control of my life. The next morning, as Mark left for work, he gave me a long, searching look. Remember, Sarah, I'm watching you. His words were a warning, but they no longer held the power they once did. I watched him leave, my hand trembling slightly as I held the curtain aside. Today was the day. The day I chose myself over this toxic marriage. The day I started anew. As his car disappeared down the road, I took a deep breath. It was time. Time to step out of the shadows and into the light. My new life was waiting, and I was ready to embrace it. As Sarah, the day I'd been both dreading and longing for had finally arrived. I stood in the hallway of the home I had shared with Mark, my heart pounding. Today was the day I would leave. My bag, packed with essentials and important documents, felt heavy in my hand, but it was nothing compared to the weight that was about to be lifted from my shoulders. I took one last look around, a bittersweet feeling washing over me. This house had been my prison, but it was also a part of my life. Shaking off the sentiment, I stepped out the door, not allowing myself to look back. Once I was a safe distance away, I called Emma. Emma, it's done. I've left. Her voice was a mix of relief and concern. Sarah, where are you? I'll come get you. I'm at the bus stop near the park. But Emma, I'm scared. What if he finds me? Don't worry, I'll be there soon. You're doing the right thing, Sarah. Hanging up, I felt a surge of fear and doubt. Was I really doing the right thing? But then I remembered the nights of humiliation, the days filled with dread, and I knew I couldn't go back. When Emma arrived, her warm embrace was a comfort. She took me to her home, where I had a room to myself. It was small and simple, but it felt like a sanctuary. The next day, with Emma's support, I went to the lawyer's office. Miss Reynolds was waiting for me. Sarah, are you ready to file for divorce and the restraining order? I nodded, my hands trembling. Yes, I am. As I signed the papers, each stroke of the pen felt like a step towards freedom. Miss Reynolds assured me she would handle everything with the utmost discretion. Leaving her office, I felt a mix of emotions. Relief, fear, uncertainty. But underlying it all was a sense of empowerment. I was taking control of my life. Over the next few days, I lived in a state of heightened anxiety. What if Mark found me? What if he tried to hurt me again? But Emma was always there, a steady presence. One evening, as we sat in her living room, I couldn't hold back my fears any longer. Emma, what if this never ends? What if he keeps finding ways to hurt me? Emma took my hand, her eyes filled with kindness. Sarah, you've already taken the hardest step. It will get better. You're not alone in this. Her words were a balm to my troubled heart. I wasn't alone. I had someone who cared. Someone who believed in me. 
As the days turned into weeks, I began to feel a sense of normalcy. I found a part-time job at a local bookstore, something I had always wanted to do. The work was a welcome distraction, and it felt good to be earning my own money. One day, while sorting through a new shipment of books, my phone buzzed with a message from Miss Reynolds. The court has processed your divorce and restraining order. Mark has been served. Reading the message, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. It was official. I was free from Mark, legally and emotionally. The future was uncertain, but for the first time in a long time, it was mine to shape. That night, as I lay in bed, I thought about the journey I had embarked on. From the depths of despair to a glimmer of hope, I had found the strength to escape a toxic marriage. The road ahead was still long, but I was on my way. And with each step, I was rediscovering the person I had lost. Myself, Sarah, a woman of strength and resilience. As Sarah, the day of the court hearing arrived. A day that would mark a definitive turn in my life. Clutching the folder of documents and evidence against Mark, my palms were sweaty with nervous anticipation. Emma was by my side, a reassuring presence in this daunting journey. In the courtroom, the judge's gavel sounded like a drumbeat in my ears. Miss Reynolds, my lawyer, presented my case with compelling clarity. She laid out the evidence of Mark's abuse, the nights of forced humiliation, my documented fears, and my desperate escape. When the judge finally spoke, his words were a balm to my years of suffering. The court grants you, Sarah, a full divorce and a permanent restraining order against Mark. His actions are not only reprehensible, but also punishable by law. I barely heard the rest of what the judge said. A mixture of relief and disbelief washed over me. It was over. I was free. As we left the courthouse, Emma hugged me tightly. You did it, Sarah. You're free. I nodded, tears streaming down my face. I can't believe it's finally over. But the journey didn't end there. Mark faced not only the divorce, but also social backlash. His reputation, once untarnished, was now marred by his abusive behavior. He lost friendships, respect, and standing in the community. In the meantime, I began to rebuild my life. The part-time job at the bookstore became full-time, and I found joy in the simple routine of work and the company of books. I rented a small apartment, my very own place, decorated to my taste, a freedom I had long forgotten. One evening, while closing up the bookstore, my phone rang. It was Mark. Sarah, I... I'm sorry. Can we talk? His voice, once so commanding, now sounded weak, almost pleading. No, Mark. There's nothing left to say. Please, Sarah. I've changed. I realize how wrong I was. I took a deep breath, steadying my voice. Mark, your apologies mean nothing to me now. You had your chance, and you chose to belittle and hurt me. I've moved on. But Sarah, I... No, Mark. This is goodbye. Do not contact me again. Hanging up, I felt a surge of empowerment. The final tie had been cut. I was no longer the woman who trembled at his voice, who doubted her worth. I was Sarah, a woman who had faced her fears and emerged stronger. My life now was simple but fulfilling. I made new friends, people who valued me for who I was. My evenings were no longer filled with dread, but with peace and contentment. I took up painting, a hobby I had long abandoned, and found solace in the strokes of color on canvas. One day, sitting in my apartment, surrounded by my paintings and books, I realized how far I had come. From a woman living in the shadows of abuse, I had stepped into the light of self-respect and independence. Looking back, I saw the journey of a woman who had been broken but not defeated. A woman who had gathered the shards of her shattered life and rebuilt it into something beautiful and whole. As Sarah, I had found not just freedom from Mark, but also freedom within myself. The freedom to live, to love, to be me. This was my victory, not just over Mark, but over every fear and doubt that had once held me captive. And in this newfound freedom, I found the greatest victory of all. The rediscovery of my own worth, and the endless possibilities that lay ahead. The story of Sarah's journey from oppression to freedom has come to a close. What do you think about Sarah's decision not to reconcile with Mark, even after his apology? Was it a display of strength, or could forgiveness have been a better path? Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story and want more, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to OSA, our stories animated. 
Your support helps us bring more powerful stories like this to you.